Beauty and Tears. October 23, 2014. Each dear soul that shares this planet as home has the ability to cry. If you look all around you, above you and below you, from the skies above to earth below your feet, there is so much to be inspired and encouraged by, including the healthiness of crying. When you're in the midst of crying or about to, try to consider that your crying is also part of God's divine plan to create more beauty and perfection from situations and events that may have little feel or look of beauty. Besides the cleaning of the eye itself, tears are a well-recognized symbol that emotions are running rampant inside of you to the point the only escape is through tears. Now tears are not only about sadness or upset, they can also describe joy and love. Tears are a raw example of what you are feeling at that very moment. They can only be triggered by a deep feeling that has surfaced and bubbled free so you can be released from whatever this feeling was and where it came from. Tears are a sort of letting go and as you do, they provide clarity once the torrent of tears is over. Joy-filled moments that could bring you to tears could be your child's first words or steps. Possibly you watched one of God's creatures give birth or witnessed a little bird take its first flight. What brings you joy is individual, but still can cause a rush of emotions that brings forth tears. Many dear souls that have had a long time of suffering and find their way out often cry. They cry for what they've finally left behind and for what still lays ahead. They cry for being alive, for gratefulness, and just for the pure simple release the tears bring. Even though crying is formed from emotions that have been buried to come to the surface, once done, you are rewarded with a physical release, relief settles over you and you are able to find rest, comfort, and peace. It is important to not ignore your tears, they are meant to come when they do. It is God's way of helping cleanse the pain away, to bring you to new directions and positive thought forms, and when you feel better you are able to think much clearer. We know it can be uncomfortable for some people to release their emotions in the form of crying. Find a tree along a countryside road where a little traffic comes by, or take a long walk on a trail that isn't occupied at that moment, or just lock yourself in your bathroom and let the flow come, allow the tears to roll down your cheeks. There is no shame dear ones when your emotions are expressed through tears. Crying is good and it is healthy and most of all, natural. Even the big, macho men cry when things get too tough. There is beauty to be found in the vulnerability of the feelings and emotions that led up to the need for release. When you are able to share this kind of release with another, which means to cry in their presence, denotes trust, and trust is a beautiful thing. Trust helps forge connections through compassion and understanding. Depending on how you demonstrate your emotions, you can either push people away, or bring them closer. Sharing has always held the best advantage for healing. When people share their sorrows and joys, they grow together. Through your ability to cry you gain essential emotional insight that may have been clouded beforehand. Exploring your emotional self, discovering who you are and why you do things can be a daunting task. It is a task that you will take on more than once in your life and each time you will recognize more of who you really are from what you don't like based on your experiences. Sometimes what is found from delving into your emotional self can cause pent-up emotions to rise, ones that have been locked away behind doors of uncomfortable experiences, and tears begin to flow. It is not a bad thing, you are simply uncovering a part of you that wants to break free from this memory. By allowing yourself to cry when needed, you are providing yourself healing that has no cost. You don't need a doctor or fancy specialist to guide you through the process. Men, women, and children are encouraged to cry once in a while in order to release emotions they have forced back from their daytime pressures. Remember, crying is not a weakness nor is it shameful. Regardless what you call your tears when they come beautiful bright hearts, let them flow, don't hold back. Crying is healthy. Allow your emotional self to be cleansed so more of your real self can shine through once all the tears are dried up. Give yourself the love and care you deserve. Spend some quality time with just you. And in that quality time, if you cry, so be it, you do. That is also a good time to pray to God, 
to turn to God and ask for God's light to shine down upon you, above you, beside you, and all around you. Thanking God for the experience to heal yourself after overcoming a painful ordeal or because something very special happened to you. After a good cry, especially after a sad moment, allow yourself to laugh again. Allow laughter to become your doorway to newfound joy, peace and love once again. And even if your tears are because of a grand and glorious moment, again allow laughter bring you out of the tear-filled moment. There is so much in you to give to others, but you need to give these things to yourself first. When you cry beautiful bright hearts, you are telling your total self that you are honoring every part of who you are, that you love every part of you and you accept this healing way of your body to work its way through every fiber of your being until you are empty and ready to start anew. Embrace you, like no one else can. Let the tears come and let them go, feel the softness they bring in you when they are done, rejoice in the strength they have left for you to carry on, and know in your heart, body, mind and spirit that God loves you so very much. And so it is. I am Ascended Master, Lady Nada through Julie Miller. SpiritualNetworks.com